in Dune, rhythm is everything. Rhythm is life, and rhythm, most important, can be death. Run! Usually sound is in what's called post-production, but Denis recognizes the value of developing the soundscape as he's shooting the film and as Joe Walker, the editor, is developing the cut. So I was collaborating while we were filming. The sounds of the worm chase. The sounds of the ornithopters. All these were being developed in tandem with the filming process. And I wanted as an editor to be able to build that sound world into this film right from the outset and build, bake it in to the cut. If you approach it in that way and you're understanding his story and what he's going for, I mean, that's what we try to do with sound. You're not doing the normal stuff. You're, you're really going after mood and character development, things like that, that would make that come alive. If you want it, make me give it to you. Use the voice. I think the voice was a big challenge because it had to sound like a real thing. It had to sound natural and not like a synthesizer right. effect. We came up with this idea of summoning the voices of their ancestors, which would be brought out as he tried to summon his own voice. Give me the water. It was almost a ghostly voice that could be an ancestral voice of the Bene Gesserit that um, Paul Atreides would be able to tune into as he grows and evolves and experiences spice. But I don't think we ever fully felt comfortable with it till maybe the last few days of the sound mix. We were in process for the longest period of time on creating the voice. Dune is all about the sand, and I felt straight away, we're not gonna be asking a Foley stage to record this. So the first thing I tried doing was sticking a microphone underneath the sand and walk around it. And I realized that a sand dune is a resonant body. You can hear someone walking 100 meters away. Theo, in those, those early experiments, had captured what we found was a, a really novel sound that most people aren't aware of, and that is, is that sand itself, in large masses, at the right humidity and temperature, makes these beautiful whale-like groans. And it m almost makes the desert like it's its own character because it has a voice, and we wanted to bring those kinds of sounds to the movie. There's a unique moment in the film when we finally see a sandworm in its fullest form. We instinctually began that sound design process to create a massive, frightening beast. Denis made very clear to us early on that that was a moment of reverence for a beautiful being. And Theo and I very quickly had to disavow ourselves of that reflex of, the Godzilla scream, for lack of a better term, you know. That's the moment where we decided if there's a silent contemplation between the two of them, then we have something very unusual. It's not a monster breaching out of the soil. It's a meeting with God. So it's really about what does the film need? And that has to be on the top, you know, that, that carries the day. So if you are telling the story, the film should tell you what it needs. Our aim was to make it feel as if we had really been there and recorded it, as if a, a documentary crew had a really good sound recordist, to make the world as realistic as possible. We can't go and record an ornithopter. We can't go and record a worm. And that's kind of the sleight of hand that we use as sound designers is finding those unique perspectives on real sounds and then amalgamating them into something that you've never heard before. 